What in your opinion is the creepiest mystery in the world? For my money, the Hinterkai effect murders. A whole family bludgeoned to death with a mattock by someone who seemed to have snuck into, and was living in their house for a while before butchering them all. The worst part was the maid told the family she heard someone walking around in the attic, the family ignored her until she quit. They hired a new maid and the murders happened her first day. A bit of an obscure one that I never see people talking about. The case of Juri Grando, a Croatian man who lived back in the 1600s who was said to be a vampire. The legend tells that, for 16 years after his death, Juri would arise from his grave by night and terrorize the village. The village priest, Giorgio, who had buried Juri 16 years previously discovered that at night somebody would knock on the doors around the village, and on whichever door he knocked, someone from that house would die within the next few days. Jury also appeared to his terrified widow in her bedroom, who described the corpse as looking as though he was smiling and gasping for breath, and would then sexually assault her. When Father Giorgio eventually came face to face with the vampire, he held out a cross in front of him and yelled Behold Jesus Christ, you vampire! Stop tormenting us! The bravest of the villagers led by the prefect Miho Radetic chased and tried to kill the vampire by piercing his heart with a stick, but failed because the stick just bounced off of his chest. One night later, Nine people went to the graveyard, carrying a cross, lamps and a hawthorn stick. They dug up Jury's coffin, and found a perfectly preserved corpse with a smile on its face. Father Giorgio said, Look, Strigon, there is Jesus Christ who saved us from hell and died for us. And you, Strigon, you cannot have peace. They then tried to pierce its heart again, but the stick could not penetrate its flesh. After some exorcism prayers, Stepan Milazic, one of the villagers, took a saw and sawed the head off the corpse. As soon as the saw tore his skin, the vampire screamed and blood started to flow from the cut. According to folklore, peace finally returned to the region after jury's decapitation. The Marfa Lights. I went out and saw them several years ago and it's haunted me ever since. None of the explanations make sense, the lights bob and weave in ones, twos and threes, they shoot up and go back and forth and the creepiest part is that sometimes look like they're getting close to you but it's hard to tell because of the darkness. Me and my friends saw something like this when we were younger. It was during the day however. We were riding our bikes across the town and we came to this open field behind which there's a small hill with couple of houses on it. We made a sudden stop when we saw an elliptical shape flying in the air next to the hill. It was glowing and changing colors from yellow to orange to red. The thing started slowly making a turn behind the hill till it completely disappeared. It then came back and now went to the front of the hill. It then slowly flew up a bit before shooting up super fast into the sky and disappearing. We both drove back to my friend's house like crazy and told her mom what we saw but she wouldn't believe us. That was until a couple of neighbors came by and told us that they saw the same thing. I also shared this story to my family. My grandma, who's very religious, lives a mile away from us in a village. She told me that when the whole village worked in the fields back in the 80s and 90s they saw the glowing orbs in the sky as well. I still get the goosebumps just thinking about this. The Bronze Age Collapse. Many great and advanced civilizations circled the Mediterranean around 1200 BC, but then in a span of only a 20 to 50 years, the cities were destroyed or abandoned and the surviving people retreating away from the coast to small inland settlements. All of the empires apart from Assyria and some of Egypt collapsed, and the area entered a dark age, with centuries passing before such advanced empires rose again. Why? No one really knows. There are records of the sea people coming with advanced weapons, foreign invaders perhaps? Along with indications of a volcanic eruption, but still, such sudden collapse of such large and advanced civilizations is concerning, and perhaps should act as a warning to us now. The Sodder Children Disappearances, to this day no one knows what happened to them on that faithful Christmas Eve over 75 years ago. It's a long story but wow is it creepy and tragic. What's strange is the events that lead up to the five children's disappearances. Sometime past midnight, their mother, Jenny, woke up to the phone ringing, on the line was someone she didn't recognize, asking for a name she didn't know and when she told the woman on the other line she had the wrong number the woman just left and hung up. Jenny then noticed that the lights were still on and the doors were all unlocked, she thought it was strange but simply thought her children forgot to lock the doors and turn off the lights. As she was trying to go back to sleep, she heard strange noises on the roof. At 1.30 she realized her house was on fire, she woke up her husband George and the children to evacuate the house. However, 
Only four of the nine children made it out of the house. George tried to save them, but he couldn't get to where the children would be. Their oldest daughter ran to a neighbor's house to call the fire department, the firemen didn't get to their home until 8 a.m. After a few hours of investigating the police concluded that the fire was started due to faulty wiring and the coroner insisted that they died in the fire. But many many details in the story and eyewitness accounts contradict this claim. George insisted that he had fixed the wiring in the house, and the lights stayed on during the fire. There were no human remains found in the wreckage of a burned house. A few people came forward and claimed they saw a man throwing fireballs at the house before the fire started, and another man stealing their ladder and cutting their phone line. A woman working in a diner claimed she saw the children and served them breakfast before they left in a car with Florida license plates. And a woman working in a hotel in South Carolina claimed she saw the children with four other people who seemed hostile and was speaking Italian. But even after all the witnesses and the lack of evidence, the police refused to reopen the case. This led Jenny and George to distrust the police and believed there was a cover-up. The Sodders firmly believed the children had been kidnapped and the fire was used to cover up the crime scene. Decades after the children's disappearances a detective wrote an article on the children's disappearances. A few months later the Sodders received a letter that was allegedly from one of the missing children as an adult, the letter said, Louis Sodder, I love brother Frankie, little boys, A90132. Many thought the letter was just a prank. But the Sodders believed this letter was a sign their children were still alive. They hired a pie but never heard anything from him. The Sodders put up a billboard with the missing children and put out a reward for $10,000, which is still up to this day. One theory of what happened was this, George used to work for the coal trucking business, back then that industry was under a lot of pressure from the Mafia. And some believe the Mafia had something to do with the children's disappearances. In the letter, they got the code A90132 was a postal code for a town in Italy. However, the majority of people believe the children did indeed die in the fire and George and Jenny refused to accept it. George and Jenny died never finding out what happened to their children, and the youngest Sodder who's still alive today, she was an infant during the time of the disappearance, still wonders whatever happened to her siblings. The Origins Behind the Story of the Pied Piper It's been 100 years since our children left, this line makes me shiver with terror. The Alien Lighthouse Disappearances I'm not gonna call this the creepiest mystery in the world but like the Doltoff Pass incident it has so many questions left unanswered and allows one to speculate. For those who don't know here is a simplified version. In December a small ship was heading towards the Alien Lighthouse, upon docking the captain was surprised to see no lighthouse keeper at the docks waiting for their arrival. He blew the horn a few times even sent up a flare to get their attention but still no one came. Joseph Moore who was set to replace one of the lighthouse keepers rode ashore and climbed up the steep stairs to the lighthouse. Once at the lighthouse Moore is presented with a strange scene, the lighthouse door is unlocked, two of the three oil-skinned coats are missing. Continuing to the kitchen the sight gets weirder, the kitchen clock had stopped working, a chair overturned almost as if someone jumped in a hurry, half-eaten food left out. An investigation was launched to find the three missing lighthouse keepers but they didn't find much except for what was in the lighthouse log. On the 12th December Thomas Marshall the second assistant, wrote of severe winds the likes of which I have never seen before in 20 years. He also noticed that James Duckett, the principal keeper, had been very quiet and that the third assistant, William MacArthur, had been crying. The final log on the 15th simply reads storm ended, see calm. God is overall. One of the answers to this disappearances is a crate connected to a supply crane had come loose and the trio attempting to save it before losing it to the sea. But some struggle with this explication as the bodies never washed ashore. Why hadn't one of the men taken his coat in such bad weather? How had three experienced lighthouse keepers been taken unaware by a wave? The last and strangest question is the weather which was said to be calm and could be seen from the nearby Isle of Lewis where it is said to be obscured during bad weather. We'll never really know what happened but like the Doltoff Pass it's so full of questions we could speculate for hours. The Disappearance of Maura Murray this was back in February 2004 and is still unsolved today. Mora was a college student who emailed all of her professors one afternoon saying that she had a family emergency and would be out of town for a while. She turned in all her assignments, got in her car, and drove off. Weather conditions are not great since it's winter in the northeast. Later that night in a small town in Vermont, a local woman reports a car accident nearby. She can see the accident from her window, as can at least two other families. 
One of the other families, a bus driver, saw Slash heard the accident and got in his school bus to go check it out. When he gets there, he sees a young woman who looks like she's cold, disoriented, and wet. He asks her if she needs help, and she adamantly says no and that she's already called the cops. The bus driver knows that this area has no cell reception, so he knows she's lying but he doesn't push it since she said no. He drives off but decides to keep his eyes on her back at his home to make sure she's okay. He gets distracted for a few minutes and by the time he comes back she's gone. After corroborating reports, it's believed that there's a total of 7 minutes where nobody has eyes on her. From what I remember, the cops got there and nobody was around. They searched the car and found it full of alcohol. They searched the woods directly nearby and found nothing. Later on, it's discovered she completely emptied her bank account on the way up and stopped more than once for alcohol. There are lots of theories, and not really any answers. It's thought that she maybe have been going to meet some friends for a weekend trip but the details still don't totally add up for that either. It's creepy for a number of reasons. She disappeared incredibly fast for one. It's believed that she disappeared off the road, so she may have been traveling in tandem with other people. But if she was going out with her friends, why have none of them come forward with what happened? And if she wasn't planning on coming back at all, why bother doing all of her homework? Her family was contacted and nobody reported any emergencies. So she also blatantly lied to her professors for some reason. I'd say the Dilatov Pass incident. So strange to find the hikers just naked with strange wounds and with the tent ripped up and clothes strewn in random places. Oak Island. Whatever is down there, whoever put it there really, really didn't want it getting out. Seriously look up all the crazy ass defense mechanisms that put there. They are currently trying to unearth it. I would rather not learn what is buried down there. The Illuminati card game. The basic story is in the 90s some guys made a card game and it has been predicting future events. I don't believe it to a T but if it is real, whoa. Some of the cards I remember. Enough is enough looks a lot like Trump. There is a card that looks like Julian Assange of WikiLeaks called and stay dead. Terrorist attack looks a lot like 9-11. Joggers may have a link to the Boston Marathon bombing. The spook light near Kwapwa, Oklahoma. I'm horrible at explaining this so I'd suggest you go to Google or something, I went to go see it on one of the best nights ever recorded. It split in two, was unnaturally bright, changed from white to yellow then to red, it blinked a couple of times too. Anyways, on a hill near it, people set up some good cameras pointed at the spook light and sent other people to walk closer to it all while having radio connection. The people walking to it reported that it had gone away after a certain point. But the camera people still saw it on camera. An old legend if I remember correctly is that it's the lantern of a Native American boy who had fallen off a cliff or something. A classic, the death of Elisa Lam. It's not her death that's the scariest mystery, it's the place where she died, the Cecil Hotel. She was caught on camera acting really strange in an elevator, some say the elevator game, like she was hiding from someone. Her body was found in the water supply for the hotel after guests have complained of bad tasting water. That's a bit fucked. The Summerton Man. A dead body washes up on a beach in Australia. Nobody is able to identify him or how he died. The only clue is a torn page from a rare book on his person. From what I've heard, it's the Russian Yeti. If you imagine being there, God I couldn't imagine the pain those campers went through. The story goes. From what I've heard, some Russian students went exploring some mountains and were warned by natives to not go on, for a yeti-like creature stalks the woods and would kill them. The students ignored them and went on. In the mists of night they were killed. Limbs ripped apart, chest caved in, on girl was screaming and had her tongue torn off. It's horrible. The officers blamed the natives but the natives denied it. To this day, the yeti was never found. Creeps me out. The Axe Man murders of New Orleans a person sneaking into houses with ease and chopping at anyone's head leaving many with shattered skulls and then dropping off the used weapon, cleaver axe. I find the simplicity a bit creepy. I will forever be bothered not knowing what happened to the lost colony of Roanoke until the day I die. I remember learning about it in 5th grade, and for some reason it's stuck with me since. For you all who don't know, it was one of the early American colonies, with over a hundred residents. The governor went on a voyage to England, and when he returned, the colony along with every single resident had disappeared without a trace, and were never found. 
The only clue was the word Croatoan carved into a nearby tree. This was the name of a local Native American tribe, a possible theory was that they had left with the tribe, but it was still odd since there was no reason for them to at the time. The bloop is a mysterious sound heard a very low frequency. It is just one sound sounding like some sort of large popping bubble. I have a fear of the deep, so it creeps me out thinking of a monster deep below. If it was a creature, it would have to be from something huge. I remember seeing a video about a woman that after getting divorced started getting stalked and assaulted in her own house. Every time police would arrive no one more than her was at the scene. Sometimes she would appear with bruises, once she appeared with a screwdriver through her hand. This happened so many times that police started ignoring her calls after the investigation on her husband and on the case left no suspects. Three months later she disappeared just to reappear next to a highway in the middle of the desert, miles away from her house, with her hands tied, dead. Autopsy later confirmed she was beaten to death. Creepiest shit I know.